Um, James, you said to me this week that you're the kind of person that is always moving forward, that you don't like looking back. You're laughing. I was listening. I, did say that. <laughs> um, I feel like that's you know true of your life and your work together. And I think the two of you are also known for embracing the new. Like your your um, the new technology is going to digital, and there was some really interesting choices that you two made in this film in terms of the look of it. Can you talk a little bit about? the deaconizers and how they were developed and sort of, you know, the, the very unique things about this film in terms of its look. Well, it's very what they are. Yeah, it's very much Andrew. I mean, he, he, he had a, I mean, and a lot of it comes from the book, the feeling of the book, but Andrew had very, very, um, very well thought out idea of what he wanted of the film, the look of the characters, that they're all wore black, you know, that all the horses were black, which wasn't easy at night when you're trying to shoot. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, and yeah, the deaconize as well. I mean, it was sort of was logically a, a way of recreating the sort of effect of a pinpoint camera, you know, pinhole camera. And the final f image of Jesse James that actually exists, well, there's two images of him that actually exist, exist. And it was trying to get that. And both of us actually, when we were watching the cut together in a cutting room, both of us regretted we didn't use it more, that effect. Um, we started off just using it as a sort of the, the link pieces, so it became kind of you know the postcards between different scenes or setting up a different location. And the studio w got back to us when they were watching dailies and said, "Can you please not use that all the time?" <laughs> and, and and I think it made us kind of we sort of censored ourselves a bit, and we both regret it at the end. You know, it's a shame. But the thing, too, about the lenses is it wasn't something that you could do in post because what it's doing to the colors as well as the focus Chromatic was... Chromatic aberration. Yes. <laughs> I think that's what it's called. Yeah, I'm not yeah. very technical. <laughs> <laughs> For the, the members of the audience who don't know, can you talk a little bit about how you made the lenses, how you built well, them? Well, it was years ago I was doing a, a, a cinema short in London and, and I took apart a stills lens and took an element, the front element of Stills lens, and put it on the front of a, a in front of my 50 mil on a on a 35 mil camera, and got that kind of effect. That was years and years ago. So when Andrew said, "Well, let's try and replicate this sort of pinhole sort of look," uh, I took that idea to well, we took the idea to Otto Nemitz, who's a camera rental house that I've always used in LA. And um, yeah, and they tried the same thing and made up some lenses that were doing it. We had three different lenses, didn't we? And then after the movie, they you know, called me up and said, um, do you mind if we rent them? <laughs> you know, and they yeah. do, they rent them and in we LA. We use them on commercials, oh, God knows why. <laughs> 